Welcome to this edition of DIY 3D Tech.com. In this episode, we're going to be taking a look at this. So, uh, actually, it was such a short print, I didn't even do a time lapse. It was just a matter of minutes. What is this? Well, it's a Z axis wobble something or another. I got off Thingiverse. So, I've had a couple couple folks on the channel mention uh, that have watched some of the prior Fabricator mini videos about the, the Z axis wobbling and the time lapse. And I've always been a little bit cautious of that and thought about, um, uh, you know, putting something like this in a retainer for the Z-axis. Because if you notice in the top, and, and we'll look at that in a little later when we install this, um, that there's just this big open hole that this, the Z-axis kind of wobbles in. And I've been actually a little afraid uh, to mess with it because I, I was, I've always been thinking that retaining or, or, or restraining that Z-axis would probably do more harm than good. Um, however, a number of viewers claim um, just the opposite, so I figured, what the heck, I went to Thingiverse, printed this bad boy out, and I'm going to install it, and uh, we'll see how it works. Now, I did print it on the the um, Wanhao, and the reason I did that is I had clear PLA in it, and so I don't have to change the filament, but it, I mean, whoops, get into the frame here, sorry about that. Um, you could easily, obviously, print this on the Fabricator Mini, it's tiny. Uh, however, I have red PLA in it, and I don't want to change it out, so it's just easier to do it over here, and I got the cameras and everything set up on this one for filming a bunch of stuff, so uh, just popped it out. So uh, let's go over to the Fab Mini, uh, install it, and let's do some test prints. So here we are at the Fabricator Mini, and we have our Z-axis uh, anti-wobble, and we went to put it on, and guess what? It doesn't fit. The diameter of the hole, now this is I think the, the 1.5 version, what well, is the 1.5 version, so the problem is this hole is smaller than this piece, so it just sits on top. That's a problem, so, okay, you know every project starts out it's going to be easy, right, and then um, something comes up. So anyways, um, I still like the idea, so you know what? We're going to jump over into SCAD and we're going to design ourselves a customizer uh, for this. So let's jump over into the computer, take a look at that, and build one of these that works and one of these that's flexible. Okay, so here we are in Open SCAD. So um, I've uh, designed a parametric part here, so I'm not going to go through all the code. Actually, it's. Um, fairly basic except for a few different pieces because um, inside here this is where it gets interesting and I'll show on the other screen because it's in the solid so notice that we have a tapered plug so again it you know should snugly fit roughly inside that opening without any type of adhesive um, and then I've left a curled type top knob and you can actually adjust this in, in all these settings in um, uh, Thingiverse uh, to handle this and uh, also you really can't see it in this model because they're very small uh, but there's um, eh, if my mouse would actually work you can see them in here there's actually two ridges to minimize the surface area which the the part rides on and so uh, if we go and we look at so we've we've uh, exported it to Thingiverse, and so here it is. And what I've done is I've I've shown a little bit exaggerated the model, so you can see that there are two pinch points um, that come to that close it. So I, I leave a couple hundredths of a millimeter uh, in the opening, and then I pinch it to the rod size, so there's less surface area covering the rod. And so, because the Z-axis doesn't move like the typical X and Y, where there's a lot of movement, uh, in short, it just moves once per layer. So, uh, while there's a little bit of wear here, I mean, it should actually last for quite some time. In fact, even the the bit where it, even if it were to wear off the uh, uh, pinch points, I don't think would be a huge difference. So, just sort of a unique design. And what you can do is just, again open it in in customizer and you'll be presented with a bunch of settings now this is the the settings that that will be in here are the settings which I've used on mine so you may have to adjust this a little bit um, so you need to scroll down because there's quite a few settings I've even put in a scale factor for the plastic you're using whether ABS or PLA 
Uh, and again, this has been based upon my experiences. And so, uh, uh, anyways, uh, hopefully you find this interesting. And with this, let's um, jump back and actually take a look at it. Uh, I've since printed it out on the uh, uh, Wanho and uh, clear PLA sort of to match the clear case of the uh, Fab Mini. So let's go over there and take a look at that. Yeah, we have... Uh We've installed this. It just kind of pressure fits in there, just um, because it's got. To get it in the frame. It's a tapered design. And then, uh, as we covered in the uh, other piece, it's got the, the points in there. Now, I did stick a screwdriver in there, and I can feel the the ridges. So, it is printing. So, it just sits in, in there. So, uh, uh, you know, it's a fairly snug fit, although it does kind of come in and out. Now, I did did for grins and giggles print a couple different sizes trying to figure out some of the adjustments so I've done a couple different versions of these testing them and this is the one I'm going to go with for the initial test I think one of the things I'm going to do is make the pass through a little bit longer um, because right now it just it comes to the thickness of the plexiglass here so let's go ahead and do some test prints watch some time lapses and see if it makes a difference now I'm a little bit skeptical of what difference it's going to make. I'm going to see if I can get in here. Uh, however, if you can see this back here, it's got a solid, get my finger out of the way, it's got a solid coupler, solid brass coupler. So, I, you know, there's, there's not a lot of give. And then the, the carriage itself, the way it's pinned, I don't see really too much how the Z-axis wobbling can move the carriage. So, um... The only thing I could think is that there might be a little bit of, um, oh God, I'm trying to think of the word for it, uh, hysterious in the in, in the rod because if the rod wobbles. It's going to take, it's not going to go in in a circular fashion in in a uniform time, if that makes sense. But that's about the only thing I can think of, and I wouldn't think that'd be very big, and. Um, you know, especially because of the tolerance of this this piece, uh, I'm not sure that would make a big difference uh, for it either. So, uh, but we'll go ahead and do some tests and see what we come up with. So, to the test we go. Watch the time lapse. Here's the finished product, and here is the original. And um, honest with you, I can't say there's much difference. The original might be even a tad better. Um, now this is the exact same PLA too, the exact same filament. I really don't see a difference between the two. You know, and a little bit, you know, what I'm saying in, in the Z wobble, um, Looking, there seems to be a little bit of stringing in the fins. I don't know. Um, so got stringing on the original. Um, this came out a little bit shinier, it seems. I don't know if you can see it in the video, but it's a little bit shinier. Um, the top, you know, and it's printed at the same heat and everything. So, like I say, I don't see where there's a difference. But um, I don't know. Uh, um, you know, it can't hurt up there. So again, because of the, the design, um, it, you know, it's got those two pieces in there that, that the rod rides on. And, and it, you know, the Z axis isn't like the X and Y. You know, it's only turning once per layer, really. So it's just the number of layers. So that, that should actually last quite a while. And it's not a forceful retainment either. So, um, like with a bearing. So, I, I don't know. Um, again, I'll put the link for Thingiverse Customizer out there. I'm going, I've put it up there with what works best for me. I would suggest taking measurements of your own machine and, um, you know, doing it based upon that. So, but anyways, it was, this was an interesting project. And a couple of viewers pointed me this way. And, um, Again, uh, for me, the jury's still out if this makes a difference. I'm going to keep it on there. What the heck? I've printed a few of them. Why not to experiment with? So I'm going to continue the experimentation. And uh, likewise, if you're interested, continue it. Let me know in the comments below what you come up with, what you think about this. And uh, hey, if you found this interesting and uh, you found this a handy little customizer, give it a thumbs up. 
and uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. A lot more of this coming, so uh, we'll see you in the next one. Cheers. Please subscribe to the channel to keep up to date on all of our projects.